Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the First Battle of Galveston, located in Galveston County on October 4th. 1862. Ever since July 1861, ships from the Union Navy had been blockading Galveston, Texas. The Navy kept the Confederate Navy and civilian transports away from the port, helping strangle the Confederate resources. On October 4, 1862, United States Navy Commander William B. Renshaw, commander of the USS Harriet, and her seven support ships entered the harbor and approached Galveston. Once arriving, Renshaw demanded the Confederates surrender. The Confederate commander, Colonel Joseph J. Cook, decided not to respond to the Union demands, and after a day, Renshaw turned to Harriet Lane around and returned to the blockading fleet with no success. As Renshaw sailed back to the blockade, four Union steamers and a mortar schooner broke off from the blockade and entered into Galveston Harbor themselves. Arriving at the port, the Union squadron of ships began to open fire at Fort Point, destroying one of the fort's guns. In retaliation, two guns on Fort Bankhead and one gun from Fort Point returned fire. Both sides did no real damage, and after an afternoon of pointless fighting, Confederate Colonel Cook sent representatives to Union Commander Renshaw on the Confederate ship Westfield. Sensing weakness, Union Commander Renshaw demanded unconditional surrender, which the Confederates immediately turned down. The Confederate command made it clear they placed the blame of any civilian casualties in the future on the unreasonable surrender terms issued by Renshaw. Because of all this, the meeting did establish a four-day truce that all civilians could leave Galveston. Included in this agreement was the oath that the Confederates would not reinforce their defenses and that Union ships could approach closer to watch the civilian evacuation. After the battle, Renshaw had only one regret that he had not written down the exact truce agreement when it was made. That is because, in a stroke of genius, Cook had decided to take advantage of the truce and have all of his troops withdraw as well. The agreement did not address the possibility of retreat, so Cook took all their supplies and weapons and left the town. Because Renshaw didn't have proof in written form, the Union forces had let the Confederates leave. In the end, Cook used a little guile and was able to pull his troops out of harm's way so that he could be useful in future battles. Because of this agreement, there are no casualties reported for either side. Please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.